or the diff or something. But anyway, we're not going anywhere except home. The Volkswagen crew had to make another emergency suspension swap when Habeck got back to the service area. This time, however, they completed the task well within time and Habeck could continue, albeit in fourth, some one minute and 20 seconds behind leader Damso. Special Stage 9 was a 14,23 kilometer test won convincingly by a fired up Habeck, but took 10 seconds off Damso. It moved him ahead of Lawrence and closed the gap to Berger to 38 seconds. Enter Stage 10 and the top car BMW had struck trouble. The trailing arm on the rear suspension had pulled out over the rough surface. Blackman managed to temporarily repair the problem to get out of the stage, but it broke again on the way to service, and his event was over. It was the BMW's first mechanical retirement in a year. Going into the final stage, 11 all eyes were on Habich as he had taken another 33 seconds off Berger in spectacular fashion in stage 10 and was now only 5 seconds behind. Damso, meanwhile, had stretched his advantage to 55 seconds over the Subaru. Berger had eased off a bit on stage 10 as the stage was being run for a second time and the road surface had become very rough with large rocks lifted out of the ground. The veteran decided that it would be pointless to chase Damso as he could only damage the car in pursuit of an unlikely win and parts for the Subaru don't come cheaply these days. However, with Habich breathing down his neck, he now had to up his pace to hold on to his second place. He managed to do that most successfully too, taking the win by just one second for his third stage win of the event. Sadly, it was not to be Habeck's day. A broken drive shaft thwarted his efforts to catch Berger, while a misfire also made itself felt. All he could do was to ensure that he made it to the finish line to salvage some points for all his efforts in one piece. The problems cost him almost three minutes, dropping him down to fifth overall. Indeed, it was character building stuff. Damso could not afford to ease off too much as with the stage 23 kilometers in length anything could still happen. Rallying often carries a real sting in the tail and a 55 second lead can disappear and evaporate very quickly. There was no such problem though as he finished just one second behind Berger to take the overall win. Lawrence was now up to third thanks to Hubbard's problems, but he could not relax too much either as Rueda was still threateningly close. A large jump on this stage could easily have spilt his retirement, but fortunately he escaped unscathed. Rueda took 19 seconds off him though, and at the end, just a scant eight seconds separated the pair. With his 64th win in the bag, Damso is now just two behind the record. Rueda was happy to salvage fourth place after a rather subdued performance. Fekin was once again the Class A7 victor, and Karth sneaked into the top 10 in his Class A7 car. Trot held on to win Class A6, while Fenter did the same in Class N2. And Cosinati and Zamandi and Derek Jacobs were popular Class A5 winners, as Swimmer and Davidson ran out the N1 victors. Serge, about the only mistake that you made or your team was a wrong tyre choice last night. From there on, it was just everything perfect. Yeah, the, the forest stage uh, seemed like we lost out a bit there. You know, we decided to go on the safe side and put dry, but it didn't really work for us. So it was one of those things, bad choice. Other than that, the car went perfectly, and I think you could go faster whenever you needed to. Yeah, the, we didn't have any problem with the car at all. It, it ran perfect, so can't complain. You're allowed to look a bit more excited than that. <laughs> Listen, off-road team.